At the start of studying physics, you take an introductory course that covers a bit of everything. But towards the late stages of university and grad school, the topics from that one course you took in freshman splinters off in hundreds of directions. Now let's compare and contrast the difference between early and late stages of physics education, specifically theoretical physics. Here's an example from an introductory textbook. In introductory physics, I work with concrete problems. As I try to calculate the loop resistance and magnetic flux of a spinning wire loop and maximize current, it's a simple methodology really, a simple find the answer and plug and chug. Now here's an example from Jackson's classical electrodynamics. I'm working with abstract proofs. I'm proving a mathematical identity when integrating a direct delta function over all space while accounting for the signal's travel time and a certain scaling factor. The contrast is huge. Not only are we dealing with harder mathematical tools, but also the nature of the problems. We're talking abstract versus concrete. Now let's take a look at the physics studied by both engineering and physics majors. I have a fun habit of grouping physics subjects into two columns. We have engineering physics and theoretical physics. Engineering physics is the physics that powers our world. Machines, engines, circuits, and flows. In engineering physics, you study the following subjects. I'll go through each one of them, but you're more than welcome to skip. In mechanics, you ask questions like, how do forces make machines move? Mechanics in explores motion, balance, and energy. Everything from cars to satellites run on these laws. In electric circuits, not to be confused with electrodynamics, you ask questions like, what happens when you flip a switch? The subject unpacks how current flows through resistors, capacitors, and modern devices. Now from ocean currents to aircraft lift, fluid mechanics helps us understand how liquids and gases behave under pressure and motion. Now, placing fluid mechanics under engineering physics might be a bit controversial. In truth, it sits at the crossroads of applied math, physics, and engineering. But speaking from experience, as I've been a former engineering student, I found it leans more naturally towards the engineering physics side. In engineering thermodynamics, not to be confused with theoretical thermal physics, we ask questions like why do engines heat up? Thermodynamics studies energy flow, heat, and work. It's behind everything from fridges to power plants. Now, theoretical physics, difference from engineering physics, studies the laws of the universe in and of themselves. So instead of simply problem solving, it becomes very rigorous and abstract, and we derive things from first principles. Now, classical mechanics, not to be confused with engineering mechanics, doesn't just study Newton. It also studies Lagrangian and Hamiltonian formalisms. It explores the deeper math behind how motion is described in complex systems. In electrodynamics, we study how electricity and magnetism are woven together, from Maxwell's equations to electromagnetic waves. This subject is the foundation for light, radio, and more. Quantum mechanics is a field that changes how we think about reality itself. It studies things at the tiniest scales. We see that particles behave like waves and probability rules. Relativity studies space, time, and gravity. It introduces and builds on Einstein's theories to explain time violation and the curvature of space-time. Now, statistical mechanics studies systems with many particles. It uses probability and microstates to explain temperature, pressure, and entropy. Now, string theory, a very niche subject, studies fundamental 
particles as strings. Proposing one-dimensional vibrations as the basis for all forces and matter. Solid-state physics studies matter in solid form. It investigates crystal structures, electron behaviors, and properties like conductivity. Now, biophysics, what's typically a graduate subject, studies life through the lens of physics. It applies physical models to understand molecular biology, neuroactivity, biomechanics, and etc. Finally, quantum field theory, a very frontier subject, studies how particles come from fields. It combines quantum mechanics and relativity to explain how particles interact and how forces work at the smaller scales. Now let's see the textbooks I recommend for each subject. For classical mechanics, nothing could go wrong with David Morin's book. It's commonly used by Olympiad or JEE advanced students. It's also widely used in many undergraduate physics programs. For electrodynamics, while more people choose Griffiths, I personally pick Jackson's classical electrodynamics. It's good because it doesn't hold your hand. It's serious and it's mathematical, and that's why I like it. You really feel like you're doing physics when you're using this book. For quantum mechanics, I like Branston. It's a step up from Griffiths, who also made a QN book. It's very packed with derivations, and its formal approach keeps you engaged. Although the text is harder to read, I find myself best able to use it when I'm in a good mood. Although it's still less advanced than Sakurai's book, it finds a good middle ground. For electric circuits, Charles Alexander's book is my go-to. It teaches both computer techniques and analog tools. You're going to have to get your hands dirty with LT Spice and MATLAB if you want this book. At the same time, you do a lot of work on paper, so it gives a holistic feel. I actually enjoy pulling it out when I'm in my room and want a fun puzzle to solve. For fluid mechanics, I recommend Frank M. White's book. It's filled with neat illustrations and rigorous questions. But for a higher level treatment of fluid mechanics, try Introduction to Fluid Dynamics by Bachelor. This is more commonly used by applied math majors and physicists. For biophysics, I recommend Bialek's book. It has clean illustrations, deep questions, and a rigorous style. It's commonly used by biomedical engineers or interdisciplinary grad students. I actually used this book in my first degree before I switched. For quantum field theory, I recommend Peskin and Schroeder. It's very mathematically dense. It's a go-to text for PhDs and researchers, and I'm hoping one day I can read it. For string theory, Zwiebach offers a solid intro for advanced undergrads. But if you want to go all out, then Potvinsky is the heavyweight. It's for PhDs and even postdocs. I haven't cracked it myself yet, but my dad tried to self-study from it. And finally, there's Mathematical Methods for Physics and Engineering by K.F. Riley. It's something of a math encyclopedia for physics and engineering and super comprehensive. Sadly, I do not own it, but all physicists and engineers would have it. That's it for my textbook tour. Hope this vid gives you a head start, or at least a few fun rabbit holes to dive into. Good luck studying. I'll see you in the next one.